Hi guys, welcome back to another DJI video review. Today we have a Thermal Take Smart Power 850 watt power supply. There's a shot on the front. It's 80 plus bronze, three year warranty. It's got modular connectors and it's got flat cables. So that's the front of it there. So this is their new Smart Power range. And we'll go onto the side there. So that's just some specs on that side. We'll actually cover those uh, shortly. And then on the back, we have some more info here. So you can see it's 100% high quality Japanese capacitors, industrial grade protection, and it's got an ultra quiet uh, 14 centimeter fan. Uh, it's got flat modular cables. It's got a uh, modular cable management, as you can see there. I believe it's not fully modular. It still has your uh, standard 24 pin, and it may have one or two PCI Express actually built in. Alrighty, for the uh, cables you get, you get one standard main power 24 pin which is standard on pretty much every single power supply I've seen you get one ATX 12 volt that's your EPS so it's a breakable 4x4 pin one and we have four PCIe so these are your six with the detachable or attachable two pin to make it to eight all up and then we got five what do we have uh, five pin SATA we have nine and your four pin peripheral is six and then we have your one floppy drive adapter which you get that plugs into a Molex. Moving up the top to the uh, output uh, voltages and wattage we have 5 volt is 25 amps, 3.3 .3 is 25 so this is pretty much standard for uh, for most power supplies. The main concern that we look at is your 12 volt so we have a single rail at 70 amps. I prefer a single rail uh, if you're running hard drives and things like that running a single rail is good as you don't need to divide each component up. And you got minus 12 is 0.8 and then your 5 volt VSV is 3 amps. Um, so that's pretty much that on the power supply. Um, I think I covered everything there. We'll just go in and uh, open it up and we'll see what you get inside it. Okay, so that's a little warranty form there. Okay, I think with like most uh, thermal tape products, you get this little uh, brochure that folds out. It sort of tells you quick installation and all that. We don't need to go through that. Okay, let's see. Also, with most uh, thermal tape ones, you get a little bag and they're all your cables. So they might be hard to see through there. I'll just put that aside and I'll open that up in a bit. And there's your nice little bag you have, you get, so you don't uh, lose them and that. Okay, that's your IEC power cable. Pretty much everyone should have one of those by now. And here's the power supply itself. So put this box away. Okay, I'll undo this twisty tie. Okay, moisture bag. Don't need those. Okay, let's open this up. Okay, so that's it there. It's the front, nice design. It's kind of like a mat finish on it, it's not real shiny, it's not really rough like I've seen some. And there's the, uh, the cable power switch goes in, it's got no uh, LED lights or anything, just a, a sticker over there. Okay, that's one side of it. That's the other side. And then we actually have the details on the either the top or the bottom, depending on how you position it. Okay, so we'll just go through the cables. So those cables there. I'll just grab a tape measure and we can go through the lengths of these cables because these are particularly important if you've got a large case or you're routing these for a server or something. You definitely want to make sure they reach. Okay, so I'll just get one of each main one there. So that's a Molex, that's a Molex, we'll grab a SATA. Just plug these in. So I don't know if you can get a shot on the uh, connectors there, but um, it's pretty standard. Red is for your PCI Express VGA cards, and then black is all standard for your peripherals for your SATA and your Molex. Let me just check. PCI Express ones. Okay, so we'll start off with the uh, 
24 pin and go from there. So full length that is 60 centimeters. So that's a, uh, I'll say that's a pretty good length for that. Okay, your EPS, I think that's the same. Yep. So 600 mil for those two. PCI Express runs out, oh, pretty much the same, so just a fraction less. So that's a good distance, whether you're installing this at the top or the bottom, it should reach to any PCI Express slot. Uh, and that SATA is really long, which I think is pretty good. That's just as long as, so that's probably 550mm um, for your first SATA. And I'll just check the increments on those SATA there, so they're um, so 15 centimeters on there, so that's enough if you're... Uh, I find some cats, some power supplies you can't loop uh, back around if you're doing uh, hard drives or you've got them stacked up. Sometimes you have to use one from an another modular rail or something. Right, that's the same as that um, one there. And then your Molex I think is going to be the same as the SATA. So, yep, same as that. So your Molex is the same distances apart, which I think is great. Those lengths are really good. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to stick this in a system, we'll fire it up, we'll stick it in with some 580s and we'll see how we go. Welcome back guys, as you can see now we've got the power supply all hooked up. Just put in three 580s, socket 2011 and uh, got it on an SSD. Um, first off we noticed, uh, as you can see on the three video cards, this power supply can't run Tri SLI. Well, it could run Tri SLI if you're running video cards that have single six pins. We simply just ran out of six pins, so because it comes with six all up, we managed to do um, actually it comes with four all up. So we managed to do eight and six, and then we had to do the two eights with the um, built-in ones on the power supply, and then the remaining two we just had to use adapters. So I guess if you're SLI across, oh, sorry SLI low end video cards, you could probably get away with this. Um, just let me turn this on now. We've got our little um, power switch here. We'll fire this up. And we'll just check the wattage while that's booting up for about 200 watts or something. It is fairly hot in here, so the fans are probably going to be at a full ball. So we're just going to probably run this through a uh, 3D mark test. So I think 3580s at full ball, it should be somewhere between 8 to 900 watts. We are running a 3960X, so it is it is a stock, uh, but still that should still pull a bit. So okay, okay, that's in Windows now. So let's have a look at drawing. See, three 400 watts straight off in Windows running these cards. So it's a uh, Pretty power hungry system already. Just fire this up. Click run, we'll just leave that at defaults. Alright, let's just head over to the uh, power meter. So this fan, it's it's pushing a bit of air, but it's still I pretty much can't hear that at all. Not over the um, VGA fans and the uh, CPU fans. So that's loading now and it's at nearly 500. So this power supply is rated at 850. Um, it's on their website, under the specs, it can do I think 1025 or just a tad over 1000 at peak. So let's see what we're at now. See, so yeah, we're at 830, so we'll see if we can actually jump over what it's. Uh, Stated at. So it says it can do 850 at what did I say 40 degrees op operating environment. So, so it's currently probably around 30 high 20s inside this room at the moment. So what's that drawing now? So yeah, that's at 863, 862. So there's no doubt that um, unfortunately I don't have another 580 to put in here. Um, it's actually uh, being used somewhere else, but yeah, uh, we could po possibly get this over a thousand if we tried to, but yeah, that's 900 now. Um, I have no doubt that this could run up to its um, what it says its peak can do.
All right, um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we covered everything. We just close that. Um, so yeah, so pretty much great power supply. Uh, it's nice and small. My only concerns is that you just can't run maybe any more than four video cards without using adapters. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.